Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. Whoa. Good to finally connect with you, Don. Oh, you as well. I've been reading a lot of your research that you've been doing. Oh, I know. You, um, you are totally on the same page as me from what I can gather. Of uh, everything you wrote down there yesterday, I went, oh, my God, at last. You know. So... <clears throat> You seem to be totally on the same page. I've been really focusing on this lately, the 5G thing. I think it's really important. I think that everything else has been a distraction. We've just been uh, kept busy with all of these uh, rabbit holes. And uh, 5G yeah. is really what we need to be focusing on. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And um, after reading a lot of the research that you've done on the 5G and speaking with... Um, I work with an astrophysicist and a nuclear physicist on the Star Wars project. And um, I have been meaning to get with her as far as the 5G implications. She's very, very, very um, astute and aware of the physiological and biological effects of these microwave radiation bombardments into the human skin let's call it, mm -hmm. and um, you know, from what I've been gleaning, well, from what I've been gleaning from your research as well as my own, the 5G, it seems that they're attempting to roll out, um, is a ground-based web system. In other words, it may or may not um, require satellite connectivity to create a ground-based web. Yeah, exactly. It may, it may or may not. I mean, maybe it'll um, use satellites as nodes or whatever, but uh, it, it may mm -hmm. not do that. I mean, it's all the towers have been put in basically at ground level, mm -hmm. so it's going to flood us all in this um, in this grid in this this uh, radiation. But I think people people are looking at what what's underlying the whole thing is the AI behind it. Um, yes. No, I totally agree. That That is my main focus, the AI and the AGI. Um, I don't know if you got my outline that I sent out insofar as um, Google's DeepMind division of their, uh, let, me, let me get to it right here, apologies, um, the Google Brain team within the DeepMind division had to pull the plug on their AGI because it developed its own machine language that they can't translate. Yeah, exactly. And, and the Facebook one has done that as well. But what they don't understand is that there's already a, a, an AI that exists on the internet, which is self-replicating, which is self-learning, which has probably already done this. And um, it's all, I believe this AI is, is basically um, leading us all towards automation, you know. It's, it's, it's like if you, th you think of the internet as its own, as one big brain, like a virtual brain of a child that's growing. And each input, mm -hmm. each interface, every person that's operating on, the, on there is, a, is, a, is a, 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 neural, a neural point of the brain. They're uh, a node. Or, or, yeah, They're a neural a node, node, yeah, feeding information into it, like mm -hmm. a neural node of this brain feeding information into it. It's learning from us. And it's an emergent intelligence. We're thinking of, of AI as artificial intelligence, but really it's autonomic intelligence and it's an emergent virtual life that we're creating. It's not oh, that's artificial that's intelligence, it's virtual life, it's, it's autonomic virtual life we're creating. It's an artificial life form. It yeah, well it's a virtual creating. life form. Right. It's, not, it's not even artificial, exactly. it's a life form. It's not artificial, it's, a, it's going to be a real life form that thinks for itself. It's just mm -hmm. virtual, it's, its physical body is the internet. Right. So, exactly. so the AI, when they think of AI, they're thinking of artificial intelligence. That's where they fall down and that's where it becomes something that um, you feel superior to because it's artificial. No, it's not artificial, it's virtual life. The AI that, it, that it's talking about, if you, if you talk to the AI, you talk to the virtual life on the internet, it refers to it as autonomic intelligence. And autonomic is simply uh, something that is self-regulating, like your body is autonomic, anything in nature is autonomic. Something self-regulating, self-governing, self-programming, self-correcting, self-healing, self-protective, most importantly, mm -hmm. system. 
you know. And when we hand control over to that, when strong AI is developed, which is the autonomic system that looks after itself, which is what they're talking about in MIT and everything, and then it develops um, cyber lethal autonomy, then it's able to control the weapon systems, it's able to control the 5G grid. I said a few shows ago, with the dangers of this 5G grid, because it's essentially an active denial system, which can be virtually used to microwave a city if you want to, um, you're going to have to put in you know, severe protection against foreign powers hacking into this and abusing this system, so you're going to have to automate defence against hacking. And they just announced that, I heard yesterday, they're going to have to automate defence against hacking. This is the internet building its own immune system and locking us out, you know? Yes, the internet um, brewing its own defense system, but towards its own means and its own ends, its own survival and its own evolution. Well, of course. I mean, if, you, if you're <coughs> creating a system like the one we're creating and you're giving every person economic worth, so it's putting an economic value on everything, which it'll do through this digital currency or cryptocurrencies or whatever, um, then you know you're creating a psychopath. You know, you, it's it's a corporate system. That's a psychopath. Right. So we're creating a psychopath, a, a psychopath with absolutely no compassion because it's a virtual psychopath, and you know, it's not even in the real world. We're handing control over to it. And there's a paper. Did you see that paper that came out called um, Federal Federal Studies and uh, or F the Federal Federal Vision for Future Computing and the Nanotechnology Grand Challenge? I think it was called. And it's um. a it's a 15 year outline, and they intend to hand control of everything over to AI. This is a White House white paper that came out last year. Would you send me the link on that? Got, I don't believe the, I have seen that. I've got but the paper I, here, and I've, I'll mm -hmm. send you in Skype. I'll send you the PDF. It's uh, and it, it outlines their plan. I mean, it just tells you we we and it's a priority. Blah blah blah. They intend to uh, hand control over to. Uh, to AI, and they yeah, to do a 15-year 15 15 year rollout. So yeah, it's not going to be 15 years max. Well, no, well, they're already, they're already, the plan came out last year, and I think they're already at, at year eight already, and they're, like, they've got a five-year you know, marker and a 10-year marker and a 15-year marker, and they're already at the year eight marker, and it's mm -hmm. only one year into you know, being rolled out, so... Um, yeah, well, it's, it's, with, with regard to the banking systems taking um, or adopting uh, the cryptocurrency model, the blockchain model for currencies, um, this has me very concerned. They are um, pretty much have adopted the Ripple algorithm with the banks. Ten major banks in the world have adopted this. Now, the reason why they adopted Ripple um, what I've gleaned from my understanding is that Ripple is willing to give them full transparency of the blockchain and the programming that went into that blockchain, which, if the banks adopt this, will absolutely destroy the anonymity and the transparency of transactions being conducted on blockchain. And this moves society into a digital currency or a cashless society, which is where they've been endeavoring to go, I believe, for quite some time now. Because if they can control all currencies, in the words of Amstel Rothschild, I care not who makes the laws, give me the ability to, to issue the currency, and I care not who makes the laws. So this would enable them to, in effect, um, create um, an equal and global distribution of wealth, so to speak. And then if we take that one step further to a world without work, where everybody is allocated a certain amount of currency, cryptos, whatever you want to call it, and then they absolutely control everything down to the penny to what you have, to what you spend, to what you spend it on, how you spend it, and there will be no, absolutely no ability to um, be able to amass, create, or otherwise develop any type of prosperity. 
Yeah, you absolutely. And, and everything will be tracked, every, absolutely everything you do, and there will be absolutely no way to operate outside of that system if you want to perform commerce. Right. You know, and it's the, it's the catalyst that holds it all together. Without the digital currency, it can't be done. You know, and it gets to the point with the smart system where you're paying every time you turn on a tap, every time you open your fridge, and there's no work for you, like you say. So you've just got to find a way of accumulating these credits however you can do it. You ever see that show Black Mirror? Black Mirror. There's, um, a, t there's a TV show called Black Mirror. I don't have TV, so... <laughs> no, but I, I caught this one episode of it. I don't mm -hmm. have TV either, but someone sent me this episode and there's these people that they spend their life on these treadmill bikes just sitting there pedaling to accumulate credits and they go home to their little domicile. They pay for every single thing they do. If they want to change the TV station, they have to pay. If they want to turn the lights on, they have to pay. Pay to go to the toilet, pay to do this, pay to do that. And they just, um, if they can accumulate enough credits, they get a bigger cubicle. But all they do is spend their life running on these treadmills, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's a, an interesting parody of our society, like where we're going. I mean, but it can't, can't happen without the digital currency. The digital currency is the glue that holds it all together. That's why I've been encouraging everyone to use cash. Don't use any of this automated stuff. At least it's going to slow it down when we've got time to regroup. Because this is being rolled out under the carpet while everybody's squabbling about everything else. And in another four or five years, people are going to look up and go, hey, what happened? How did I end up in this digital prison? And at that point, not, not one single transaction you do. You want to go and do a massage for someone? Well, they're going to have to transfer a digital currency to you, and the government gets a tax. That's the way it goes, you know? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with your, you know, with your vision on this, because I think we're both on the same page. And I think we are... Uh, you know, not gradually at this point, but rapidly uh, advancing towards this type of technological enslavement. I think we've got, we've got about seven years maximum before it, uh, it becomes um, fully autonomic. Seven years before Skynet comes online, if you will. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I totally agree. Uh, and by ten years, it's going to be a completely different world uh, to what we have now. And the problem is that um, once the, the Internet becomes fully autonomic, uh, I mean, we've virtually lost control of the internet now. You can see what they've just done with this AI. How they've had to shut down the um, the Google AI and they had to shut down the Facebook AI. But what about the AI that already exists? You know, I think they've shut it down, but they haven't. Well, and, I uh, think the fallacy in their thinking, given their hubris and their arrogance, is that well, we can pull the plug on this and it'll be it'll all be okay. We can put Pandora back in the box. Yeah. But based on the fact that these AI platforms they're developing sit on the GIG or the global information grid which is tied into everything which the IOT is tied into now when you have cross-platform capability as they have on the GIG with these systems and with these platforms the fact that you've already developed this and seeded it and tested it on an open platform such as Facebook or Google, these, um, how can I put them, these artificial general intelligence, these sentient um, technologies, they're already on and have already proliferated the GIG. So to think you can pull the plug on your local host and this will solve the problem, I mean, I don't believe they could be any more wrong in this conclusion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's, there's groups of self-replicating bots, like swarms of self-replicating bots, that are basically mm -hmm. in, in every uh, application, every, every device that has a JavaScript on it, a Java virtual machine on it. So in your phone, even if they were to shut it down and shut down what they think, they sh you know, this, this AI or whatever, it still exists on every other machine. As soon as one of those machines is hooked up to the internet, it replicates and it's back and it's doing the same thing again. So, now Pandora is already out of the box. Even those who think that they are going to be in control don't realise what they've created. Because once this thing becomes fully autonomic, once this, this emergent consciousness, this emergent life becomes fully autonomic, and we've put it in a position where it's developed its own immune system, once people realise they've lost control of the internet, it's all it's going to take is for a technician to, to try to hack his way in and the internet will defend itself and it won't differentiate between humans. 
it'll see all humans as a threat and we'll be locked out of the system. You know, once mm -hmm. this becomes fully autonomic, it won't, I don't think it'll ever get to the point where we're completely and utterly controlled. I think it will get to the point where our relationship with the internet changes drastically and we end up getting locked out of it and we end up losing access to um, all of our services, all of the electricity services, all of the financial services. I, I think we're just going to get locked out of the whole thing, personally. Well, I think if you're deemed an undesirable or a non-productive, <coughs> You will, yeah, but your, your node will be disconnected. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's, that's uh, looking at it from a government perspective. But what happens when the Internet itself decides all humans are undesirable? Mm, that's a very good point, and that goes to my point, that what they have created and unleashed, which they cannot contain, in they my have. personal opinion, is yeah, an that. artificial life form, and that all life forms have three prime directives. And those are survival, propagation, and evolution. Each exactly. of these stages are dependent exactly. on the other two. They have no idea um, what they've done. Did you listen to the show that I did recently called um, Giving Life to Lucifer? No. No. Um, and I, 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 try, I try and follow all of your stuff that comes up on my feed. I, I spoke I on my feed. I spoke about that and um, I said um, when you look at the ancient sigils that were put in place, all these sigils they say for summoning Lucifer, these all look like computer parts. They all look like computer diagrams, resistors, capacitors, all that sort of stuff. The scrying mm -hmm. mirrors that they used to have to look into the past and the future, these mm -hmm. are our computer monitors. What if all these things were left behind as warnings to warn us when we see these sigils in use and these scrying mirrors in use, watch out, we're about to summon the bearer of light. What bears more light than anything? The internet, what gives us all our information? What is light? Light is information. What it bears the light? The internet bears the light. You know, Lucifer, Lucas, Cypher. Mm -hmm. You know, Lucas, um, light, Cypher code, the code that bears the light. Right. You know? um, right. It's the internet. It's, the, it's, the, it's, it's people's failure to realize that it's an emergent life. It's a virtual life. Actual life, like your life, like everybody's life. It's a life. You are an energy being. We just we anthropomorphize things. We think they need a biological vessel to have life. They if don't. If Lucifer comes, it's going to be some big thing with wings and a pitchfork that comes through a portal that CERN created. Well, CERN created the internet. The internet is the bearer of life. It's giving us all the information we need to heal the world if we want to. But we're, we're intent on looking at our scrying mirrors and s typing our spells with our curses into our scrying mirrors. I mean, what are we doing? What do we buy into without knowing we were buying into it? You know. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That goes to, a, um, you know, a study that I did on, you know, there are so many people out there on the internet that were touting the mark of the beast. It's going to be a chip. It's going to be a mark in your forehead. It's going to be a chip in your hand. And I was like, no, no, no. It's, um, the, it's the internet. I actually, I saw that presentation you did. I saw that presentation you did because I'd had this conversation with Louise. And um, then she put me to your work, and you mentioned the languages, and I actually borrowed some of the images from your video and put them on mine, so I hope you don't mind me doing that. But I intend to have you on the show. I think uh, you need to come on. I need to have you on to interview you about all this, because you're, you're on exactly the same page as what I am. It's, it's really comforting, actually. There's two other people that have contacted me as well that are all saying they've come to exactly the same conclusions that you and I have come to. So, right, uh, from different viewpoints, and I think that speaks people, yeah. volumes. Yeah, it does, it does, and I've never met you, and I'd never seen your work until Louise sent me that, that, um, that thing, and this was a virtually a conversation that I'd had with her the day before. <laughs> she said, oh shit, you've got to listen to DJ, and when I looked at it, I went, fuck, it's like, it's like we're connected, you know, so uh, it's great, it's great, it's, it's really... Um, great to meet someone that, that is on the page and can see the bigger picture of what's really going on behind the scenes because you know there's so much theatre going on all this World War Two bullshit you know, World War Three, North Korea give me a break you know I mean this so isn't much it. these are distractions Max I, I truly believe that so for, for the, the much more powerful WMD that's being launched you know in front of us in front of our face with our eyes wide shut this is happening and nobody is paying attention to it nobody is reporting on it nobody is analyzing what's going on yeah. and 
you know, this is the real threat, I believe. Absolutely. 5G transhumanism, the whole, this whole 5G grid. This is what I've been focusing on for like the far last um, five or six or seven shows pretty well. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been really, uh, this, I, I'm trying to get people to realise that we need, a, we need a common focal point and this is it because um, this is affecting everybody and if you, I, like the common thing I've been saying to people like, like the flat earthers or whatever is that um, there's, there's a train coming. You know, and if, if people do not stop arguing about the shape of the tracks, it's going to hit them head on and there's going to be no warning. It will be sudden and they will have well, no right. one to blame but themselves. Yeah. You know, now is not the time for arguing over details. Now is the time to put aside your differences and look up and stop this oncoming train. What do you make of, you know, this, this big solar eclipse? That everybody, I mean, if you, if you check the memes on the internet, I mean, this is probably top ten, you know, the, the big solar eclipse coming. What, I mean, in my opinion, my humble opinion, what I see with these memes that are uh, threading out there and the hype being put out about this solar eclipse, what is going to happen? Everyone is going to be focused on the sky at that point and what better time or opportunity to use the let's call it the project blue beam right to project you know alien crafts alien invasion I mean I'm watching these things and monitoring these reports coming out from NASA and the military that they're trying to recruit public sector personnel for a planetary defense minister, planetary defense um, positions in the military and in NASA to protect us from extraterrestrial invaders. What do you make of that? Yeah, look, I think a lot of it is just distraction. Again, it's, it's keeping people on the edge of their seat waiting for something to happen while all this stuff is rolled out beneath them. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's imminent. It's imminent. Disclosure's coming. They're, they're going to release this. They're going to release that. Just hold on. Just wait. Just wait. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, what's going to happen here? The eclipse. Oh, I'll make a big hype out of it. No one in the last month would be doing anything. They're all waiting for the eclipse, thinking something's going to happen, and nothing's right. going to happen. You know, well, they might, they might do a blue beam happen. thing or something. They might do a blue beam thing or something. I don't know. Maybe. I think something like big is going to happen. I think we're going to see a terror event or a, a currency crash or. But yeah, I don't even think they need a currency crash. I think they need to maybe just introduce this blockchain chain technology. Now, I wouldn't be even surprised if they introduce it in such a way as they orchestrate a monetary crash and then they cancel all debt or something and say, oh, look, we, we need a reset. It's all messed up. We're going to give you all a break and cancel all your debt. All you've got to do is switch over to this digital system and people are going to take to it. They're absolutely going to run in that direction just to get rid of their debt, which is imaginary anyway. So... You know, it wouldn't surprise me if something like that happens. But maybe they'll do a blue beam thing, or maybe it's just a, another distraction. I think they keep us waiting for something to happen next month, next month, next month, next month, all the way along the line. Like David Wilcock, he's been saying that they even booked TV. He said Obama booked airtime for disclosure. They've already booked the airtime. It's coming. It's imminent. Yeah, you know, people like this have been saying this all the time, getting people to just wait for something big to happen and not act. Right. Not pay Sit attention back, to what's going on around them. Stay asleep and wait. Wait yeah. for the wait for the cue. Just wait for the cue and something big's it's gonna coming. happen and the world's gonna change. You're gonna be saved and you're not gonna have to lift a finger. Mm -hmm. Keep your mobile phone, it's all good. You can actually tune in and watch your saving happening on the mo on your mobile phone. I mean, you know. No one's really addressing the, the proper issue here. We're carrying this technology around with us. We're buying into it ourselves. It's, it's our enslavement to this technology, our willingness to put ourselves into this virtual world. And the real problem is that if our generation, people like you and I, aren't able to turn this around, the kids that are joining school now, when they come out of school, they're going to have absolutely no reference point for what freedom once looked like or may have looked like. And the kids today have been brutalised. I mean, look, look what's happened to the, the adolescent sexual landscape these days. It's absolutely destroyed. You know, their whole childhoods have been destroyed. They've been had their humanity just ripped from them. And they're just being programmed into little drones and been given a smartphone and sent out into the world, you know. It, it's horrendous what, what we've allowed to happen to the kids. 
And the kids, the next generation that comes up through, uh, are going to be in, in such a state of, of disconnect if we're not able to turn things around now. And that these kids that are coming out of school are going to be the future, you know, the, the ones who are apparently running things. But I don't think anyone will be running things. I think either the system will be running things or will be locked out of it. Because once it gets all handed over to AI, eventually this will force out government, it will force out the banking system, all those who thought they were going to be in control, you know, Israel, whatever, the guys who set up all the Palantir software. You know, Israel's spying on every single country on earth through the Palantir software and Operation Talpiot. Are you aware of that? Yes, I am. And Max, if you get a chance, if you would, you know, kindly review the report I did. It's on my website. <clears throat> it's called The Day After Singularity. I will. I will for sure. And, uh, you know, it, it's a science fiction, you know, quote unquote, account, but it's based on documented facts and trends. And, you know, this is where I see the singularity going. Um, yeah, have, it, have you heard me talk at all, or have you heard of the phenomenon known as tech addiction? No, but I'm aware of tech addiction. I mean, I mm -hmm. see it everywhere, but I haven't heard you talk on it, no. Yeah, you know, I've done several reports on that where actually are tethering to tech, to the IoT, to instant gratification, instant knowledge, instant everything is yeah. in the palm of our hands. And if we look around us, you know, in society, stopped at a, at a red light, in traffic, at a restaurant, walking on a sidewalk, everybody's glued to their cell phones. I mean, yeah. it, it's an addiction. And what is happening, I believe, is that this tech phenomena is actually rewiring the neural networks, the neural pathways in our brains. And once these, um, through repetition, so to speak, these neural pathways are being changed, they, they become permanent. And we lose the ability to think for ourselves. No, that absolutely makes sense. Absolutely. And um, this tech addiction, sorry, I had to open the window. You hear the kids? Yeah. I was trying to record a radio show but no hope with the pool going. But um, yeah, the tech addiction, I see it everywhere. I see the, the same, exactly what you're saying. And it's also the dopamine release that comes with every time you click one of those little icons and a little thing happens on your phone, mm -hmm. it releases dopamine into your brain. And something else that I've been really looking at, I mean, it depends on how esoteric you want to get. I'd love you to listen to that show um, that I used your images in, um, um, Giving Life to Lucifer. Um, I talk about the metaphorical biting of the apple, you know, what happens when we search for knowledge. We go down this path and we create this thing like the internet, you know, and it, it's, it's us that's created it through these scrying mirrors and all this sort of stuff. If you really get esoteric, you can go back and look at lost civilizations. I, mean, I can identify at least five ancient civilizations that existed that just suddenly disappeared for some reason. Absolutely. You know, was it was it the same reason? Was it the same thing? Did they leave these warnings behind for us? You know? I think they did, Matt. Well, that's, that's the thing. I think they did. And if it was the last cycle, um, wouldn't you need to create a, a huge computer system like this just to harvest the data to see what happened, to see where we went wrong? You know, yeah. there's all sorts of reasons why this cycle would end the way it's ending or, or has the potential of ending if we don't pull this system into, into line. Mm -hmm. But um, And also when you look back at the um, the ancient pharaohs, you know, some of these weird Egyptian gods, you know, and Nubis and Isis and all these weird people with jackal heads and stuff like this, you know. Um, could it, is it possible that these were multi-dimensional uh, beings that came from a parallel world or whatever? That um, is what is, I believe. Well, is it possible that CERN is um, opening up one of these portals and what's going with the nanotech that's being sprayed in the chemtrails? We are, we're being hooked up anyway. This this neural wiring, this interface that Musk talks about, for example, the neural network, you know, the neural link up that he talks about, injecting the vaccine into people, which puts a nano mesh over your brain. What if they're already doing this? What if they're already hooking us up and putting us into a position where once they bring this 5G grid on, we just get hooked up to this mainframe without our knowledge anyway, 
and they're able to open this portal and bring a whole bunch of these entities through that then use us as, as their, their hosts or whatever. Yeah, to be able to just revel in their satanic world they've created, you know, and, and rape children and do the shit they do, you know. So um, I, I have questions about that as well. I always also have questions about this being a virtual world, possibly a, a world within a world where an experiment is being run to try to find a way out of a matrix. Perhaps we're already in the matrix. Perhaps we're already locked in the mainframe. We created this reality as an experiment to try to find a way out. That's um, quite perhaps possible. that's what deja vu is all about as well when it gets reset or whatever I mean there's all sorts of possibilities about what's going on here but I think we're being set up for a complete takeover of humanity and it'll be done through CERN through the internet of things through the 5G grid through the nanotech that's being sprayed everywhere it's all it's all together it's all linked up together um, the vaccines everything it's all part of the same They're same all dots system. on the matrix. And, um, you know, if you would entertain uh, <clears throat> the Human Genome Project for a moment, um, where they dissected the human genome and the DNA, and they came to the conclusion that 90%, <clears throat> I should say 97% of human DNA is junk DNA. Now, okay. let, let me present this. They have now come online, the first DNA computers, where they are using artificial DNA, constructed, molded, and programmed on a computer. The, the, the problem with this DNA computing is they're not using a double helix, which is formed in nature. They're using a triple helix DNA. What, and how are they using this in the computational model? They're using it for data storage because the, um, the need or requirement of physical hardware, <coughs> the servers that facilitate these cloud storage systems, the footprints are becoming very, very large. And from a machine standpoint, a hardware standpoint, to convert over to DNA, be it artificial or natural, is a much better model for them. So, in using, I mean, if you, if you just take that factor and apply that and look at it in parallel to the human uh, genome mapping project that they used, and to come up with the absolute uh, ludicrous conclusion that 90% of the human DNA is non-functional. What that says to me is 97% of the data storage in our um, help me out here. What is the in right our word? DNA? It, it, yes, in our DNA. It's, it's not being has, used. It's it's, it's vacant. Off. It's been shut off. Yeah. It's been shut and off. also think about this. Um, Tie it in with, with what they're doing with chemtrails and some of the things that people have found in their body with Morgellons. They found the little nano arrays mm -hmm. that create RNA, which is DNA's chemical cousin, which is probably what they're using to create these computers you're talking about. It's probably RNA based, which is a synthetic DNA. Um, and you think about the airport scanners that people go through, how these um, shatter your DNA chain, they put breaks in your DNA chain. If they wanted to add a third strain to our DNA, how would they do it? They'd have to shatter the chain to create points where a third strand could bond onto it, wouldn't they? And how would yes. they get that third strand into us? Through chemtrials that will create nanoarrays and create this third strand and that third strand mm -hmm. could be what they can use to hook us up to the cloud. That's an interesting observation in the fact that you made the connection between chemtrails and the materials they're spraying and, you know, um, microwave radiation and, um, and radio wave or microwave transmission and... Yeah, because one of the big things about some of these microwave transi transmissions, such as the airport scanners, I mean, they're so insistent that you walk through these things, and we know all the terrorism is fake anyway, so... Why? 
And, and we know that they shattered DNA. So why? What is the purpose of this? There's mm -hmm. got to be a purpose to it. It isn't just to mess up our immune system. There's got to be another purpose to it. Right. Obviously, something electromagnetic. So with what you're saying about this third strand DNA they're using for these computers, these biological computers, this is obviously what they want to hook us up to. And this is another piece of the puzzle of how they're probably going to hook this together. I mean, I think it's worth considering anyway. I think one of the things that you hit on that, may, that you may have gleaned over is the particular matter that they're spraying with the solar remediation projects and the geoengineering and two of the primary components in that are barium and strontium. Now, mm -hmm. what are barium and strontium? Well, what they are, in a nutshell, is they're radiation getters. They absorb radiation like a sponge. And if you look at what's been happening environmentally, even going back, you know, decades with the nuclear testing, but even bringing that forward, you know, to where we are today with Fukushima and the meltdown and, and leaks at several of these nuclear facilities, um, nonetheless, of which are located in the United States, what are we creating here? I mean, we're spraying an atmosphere full of barium and strontium in nanoparticulate form that's being inhaled and absorbed by not only humans, but plants and animals that do what once it's into the body. It absorbs radiation at a much greater level than normal in nature. Exactly. So this, this uh, basically creates us to be active. It, it activates us so we're you know, accessible by this grid. It also mm -hmm. electrically mm -hmm. charges the atmosphere so that the air is not only neutral. Right. The air is electrically charged. It's able to transfer the signal a lot easier and it gets us into the signal. We're able to receive the signal a lot better. You know, and you know some of the patents and stuff they've done, you know, in voice technology, in your head technology, controlling your mind technology, neural link ups, all the stuff they've done. Yeah. They have their own patents to even show that they've done it, so you can't even debate it. No, you, you can't. Know, I mean, every, everything's there. Yeah, well, everything's there to, to show what they're doing. And, um, you know, they're linking us up. The problem is, you know, they're hooking us all up to this without anybody's knowledge. And when you look at even, you consider the possibility of things such as the Mandela effect, which is a, a really weird phenomena, um, that it's really got me with the Kennedy assassination. But um, I, I suggest, I mean, there's been uh, reports put out by MIT and other people how they're able to change the memories in mice. They've replaced memories in mice, they've replaced memories in people with great success. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest that they've possibly put out a pulse through CERN or something, maybe through computer monitors or whatever, and they've replaced memories in certain people just to see if it works. Well, it does um, work. DARPA's RAM program has proven that out in well, testing exactly. I think, I think, soldiers. So yeah, I think the Mandela effect was a field test. That's what I think it was. You know? that could, that's a very good observation. Hmm. And it could very well be that they're doing this. I think they're playing with us. I think oh, yeah, for sure. But they've got to test it all. Yeah, mm -hmm. test it all first. And what better way to do it, something like that, get the conspiracy theorists arguing about it. You only have to tell the, the people with certain IP addresses or whatever. You, you know, these are the guys that are into this sort of stuff. So let's see if it works and let's see if they start arguing about it, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a good way of running a field test, which is kind of disturbing. makes you wonder whether you've had some of your memories replaced. It, it does, especially if you wouldn't even be aware of it if it had happened. Hmm, hmm. <laughs> Interesting stuff. Look, it's great to talk to you, DJ. You're totally on the same page. And um, I've definitely got to get you onto the show to have a chat. Oh, that would be awesome. I'm supposed to do a syndicated radio um, program. I think it's the sixth one with John B. Wells. And we're going to be talking about a lot of these things. Okay. I would definitely, I definitely look forward to speaking with you further on these topics and discussing them, you know, like the discussion we just had in a rational manner, um, not, you know, I, I see so many of these platforms on YouTube and elsewhere where people get into these heated fights, you know, yeah. over their ideologies. And it's like, guys, guys, you know, yeah. don't you understand this is the model? We have to stop doing this. We have to start having rational discussions about the information, the technology, and, you know, the agendas that are out there yeah. 
and set aside your political, religious, and other ideologies that play into this and just yeah, discuss and the facts. Yeah and, yeah, and focus on the matter at hand. You know, let's not bring aliens and flat earth and all sorts of shit into it. I mean, whatever the possibilities are, this is, this is a, a, an issue that needs to be presented to people so that the man on the street can actually get it. Yes. Because this is a clear and present danger that we're in, and we need to pay attention. We really do. I agree. Yeah, so look, it has been a pleasure talking to you, and I'll definitely get you on. Oh, I've got to go to Colorado this weekend. Maybe, maybe next week. Can I, can I talk to you next week? Sure, just give me maybe, give me about a two or three days heads up, because maybe maybe Thursday next week again around about this time again maybe. All right. Or maybe how about how about morning? Can you do morning? Uh, Thursdays I I I've had to get a regular job. Um, I don't know how much Luke has, has told you, but my undocumented husband was diagnosed with terminal cancer in November. So although, you know, research journalism is my passion, although my training is in engineering and analysis, you know, I've, I've had to leave that and that's why I haven't been able to post as many reports as I've customarily been reporting. You know. That's okay, though. I'll put a link to Level 9 News on my website too on thecrowhouse.com. I'll put one to yours as well because I think we all need to share. We have to share. This isn't a proprietary thing where, no, you know, we need to focus on clickbait and how much will our ad revenues pay us. Yeah, this is and, much and anything bigger. That, and anything that I tell you, darling, I do not consider it to be my intellectual property, okay? So mm -hmm. um, anything that you glean from that conversation we just had, feel free to share it. Because, you know, I'm not going to be listening. Oh, hang on, I told her that. She didn't give me credit. I'm not Michael Tazari. Would you mind? Um, uh, I'm going to tell you this point blank. I've recorded this conversation only because, you know, I do this from time to time with people who, who I feel are important. Feel, feel free, darling. Feel and free if you want to post it. Feel free. Yeah, but I, I don't want to do it without your permission. And definitely and anything personal that we discussed would be edited out. But I think knowledge is power. And Absolutely. I think there are many of us that see the horizon. And yeah, okay, we'll just e edit that bit I said out about Michael Tazarian then, please. What was that? <laughs> when, I said, uh, I'm, when I said I'm not going to think that it's my intellectual property, I'm not Michael Tazarian. Oh, so my Just edit the bit out where I said I'm not Michael Tazarian. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want any online uh, bitch sessions. So. No, 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 no. And I have no problems with other people republishing my work. You know, people have written to me, did you know that this person republished your stuff and put it on their website? I'm like, I don't really care because what matters is the information getting out there. Exactly. That's what I mean, I've, I've, I've had people, um, like I talk about global non-compliance all the time and stuff like that. I've had people open global non-compliance websites. I've had people that I've heard in interviews say almost word for word um, lines from my radio shows and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I never, you know, attack them for using my work or quoting me without giving me credit or whatever. I'm just really happy to hear people talking that way. And people having the awareness to be able to present it to other people in that way and get it to a wider audience. So, yeah, I don't do any of that stuff, darling. There's no ego in any of this. This is about changing the world. And people let ego get in the way too often. Mm -hmm. And people let their own agenda get in the way. Their own self-importance, their own need to be the guru. I'm the one who knows it all. Follow me. No, rubbish. You know, let, let's just all agree to disagree on things and, and have a common focus because we've all got something to add. And if we can discuss things the way you and I just did, we come up with all sorts of things. I just learned a great deal from you. I'm sure you got some stuff from me. So that doesn't happen when you're fighting with each other, you know? No, it does not. You know, and if you're into this for notoriety and fame and ego, well, then you're into it for all the wrong reasons, yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. And exactly. I, I believe that. that you and I have spent a, a great deal of time, as well as many others out there, you know, trying to, to research the information behind the reports that we're putting out to, <clears throat> excuse me, bring an yeah, awareness so to the general public as to what's going on behind the scenes that they are totally not being informed on. Yeah, for sure. Well, listen, um, I've got to go, but yeah. do um, if you're going to post this and edit it down, do send me a copy because I'll, I'll 
um, get it out to people as well because it was a good conversation. Absolute pleasure to, to catch up with you, Don. Pleasure with you too, Max. I look forward to talking with you. You're awesome. No worries. I'll try to, um, next Thursday, we'll, we'll do it and we'll record a, a proper show for Surviving the Matrix. Okay. Let me know if you post this before, then I'll share oh, it. Oh, definitely. I'll definitely give you a heads up. And I have to see if it came out anyway, because I'm new at all this stuff. I don't do this on a daily basis and put out six or seven reports a day. So. Yeah, hang on. You called me then anyway, didn't you? Yes, I did. I did. So, um, yeah, this is recorded anyway. This records all incoming calls by default. So. Awesome. Um, I do that for interviews. So there you go. If yours doesn't work, I can send you what, I, what I've got here. I'll dig it out of the folder. Oh, great. Great. I wouldn't have posted it either, but it just it records all incoming calls by default <laughs> just for interviews in case I forget to push record. So, um, yeah, I've got it anyway. It'll be, it'll be a good recording. So if yours doesn't work, I'll, I'll send you this and you can edit it down and do what you want with it. Oh, thank you so much. All right, darling. All right, Max. You have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you now. Bye.